from the great halls of their house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, the Vision, Bill Fisher. Their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicki Fisher. Our Captain Marvel and head flight trainee, Jennifer Scripchuk. And our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered soon-to-be billionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with them, and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes in Training Team. Captain's Log Supplemental. Miss Vicky. Yes, sir. You know what? Go ahead. You know, I've been thinking about this Sentinel system. Yeah. Tell me about the Sentinel system. So what I was thinking was we have the one car that's got the aim dash that's slowing us down because mm-hmm. installing the aim dash is actually it probably is easy but it's quite hard the first time and we haven't figured that out yet the sentinel system is really easy to set up so what i was thinking was why don't we put it in the uh, lemons car and we'll worry about the aim data information separately and we'll, we'll kind of break it down into a project because then we'd have the motorsports video system that we really, really want, and we'd be able to stream it. We just won't have all the data inside, but we have the data ex- outside, so we can combine them later. But I think that's a really good solution. So what does it, what does this uh, Sentinel system do? Well, w- if it had the aim data, it would have all the data on the screen, and you could see all their telemetry and everything live. But we'd be able to not only record it for viewing after the race, but we could actually watch our car during the race. Ooh, like on the monitor and everything? On a monitor? If you were at home and I was at a track, or if you were at the track and I was at home, you know, depends depends on who gets the little short straw, but we'd be able to watch each other. You know, it's something I've always wanted to do. And you know what? If you're driving, you know what you can do on the aim, on the Sentinel system? What's that? You can communicate to me with your hands, and I can't do a thing about it. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> So, you know, if you need to give a wave or a jersey wave, whatever you need, we could save it and see it on the screen. And then you can have up to three different cameras and it'll have picture in picture. You'll have the basic main shot out the front window and then two cameras where you put them wherever you want. One could be on the driver or one could be on the rear view. It's kind of cool. Then we can upload it onto YouTube. We could. We could bore millions of people on YouTube. I love it. All right. Very well. You know what's uh, the only downside I see about this? What? Your mom and my mom are going to be panic stricken the entire weekend watching this thing to see if everything's going well. This is true. We probably shouldn't tell them. I like the idea of having a sentinel. Mm -hmm. Well, luckily we have one. Maybe two. Depends on how things go. We're going to try. All right. That sounds like a plan. That's the project. We got to get that ready for the next race. Sounds great. All right. Very well. Thank you, ma'am. It's that time again, people. Dominating with Dawson. With guest judge Jeremy. Hey, judge. Hey, hey. That's right. I, I have. I saw I'll this. do some serious judging. No problem. Uh, <laughs> this, I, I Very saw judgmental. This. I saw this on Grassroots Motorsports Magazine, and I thought it was fun. So they were asking. I'm going to paraphrase their question into a form that we can use it for dominating with Dawson. What are three expensive tools that you think are more than worth their price? Ooh. You go. You said ooh, so you go. What's your favorite tool that you've got? That you're like, oh, I spent a lot on this, but nice to have. So up to three. And, you know, obviously, if, kind of if, think you, want about go, that. if you want to go to four, that's fine. Whatevs. <sighs> Jeremy, you got one. You used to be a so, hardcore so tool, tool guy. So for, tool for the racetrack. Tool uh, for tool for tool for the, the the home garage. Tool for whatever you need to get your racing car or your high performance car. And something that you say, you know, this one's not cheap, but damn, it's good. Do you know uh, what? She doesn't uh, wait, Jeremy. Go ahead. Go ahead, Vicky. <laughs> go ahead. 
Go ahead. Bulldozer, please. I, I would have to say the quick jacks. If you got the right car for it. Like yeah, we don't, we, I, need, I need some of those. We don't need them for the Honda because literally you can jack up one side of the car and like the whole car goes up. So um, if you if you hit it just right. Um, but Especially when we the had the race truck, I tell you, those quick jacks were invaluable. I need to get a set of those real bad. Yeah. Holy cow. Okay. I, I agree. Quick jacks are fantastic. They're, they're like, but, but they are, they are fairly expensive. I mean, they're yeah. somewhere between a thousand and two thousand bucks, depending on which one you get, I believe. Right. They were yeah. like 1500, I think. Uh, they, they were like, on so, sale when we got them. Yeah. They're like right. 12 to 1200. Maybe it was pre plague. So I think I got them for 900, but it, yeah, they, they, think... they did. They do go on sale fairly frequently. I don't know what they go on sale for now, but they do drop the price pretty often. Yeah. Yeah. They do. Jeremy, you got one, Mr. Toolman. Oh, yeah. I got quite a few. I'm sure you um, do. I would say the number one thing is a really good torque wrench. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, um, nice. Ugga duggas just don't do it. And if you got to pull apart a motor and put motor back together, I mean, a quality digital flex head torque wrench is the way to go. But, um, but, but Jeremy, I've got an impact wrench that's put a battery. It should be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Ugga duggas work great. Um. Number two would be, this is kind of like, I'm clumping a bunch of things in one, but mm -hmm. especially for the racetrack is any sort of cordless tools that you have, like yeah. your, your ratchets, your quarter inch ratchet, your three eighths ratchet, like any ratchets, half inch guns, three eighths guns, all of those cord th those cordless tools um, are a must have uh, grinders, things like that. It just makes it so much easier. Um, mm -hmm. Especially at the track. Yeah. There yeah. she goes. And then she's, she's about to go off, Jeremy. You better hurry. And then uh, the next <laughs> thing is, is uh, you know, really good quality um, hand tools, sockets, wrenches. Yeah. Like you, you, you it, there's a huge difference between just having Harbor Freight ones and having a good quality, you know, ratchet um, or a wrench. It, it makes a big, big difference. Not at yeah, the track, know, it, though. It, Not at the it track. It does. At the, at the Not track, at the it, track. If, it, if you have a really good ratchet at the track, like to me, the, the difference in, in a great ratchet is, you know, how, how many have the space between clicks, you know? So, you know, having a good ratchet that doesn't have a, a bunch of space between where they click might mean the difference in being able to get that, get that nut on the back of that thing started. You know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. even yep. if it seems like a small difference, it might be something that's going to allow you to get that work done at the track where you might as well, might otherwise not have been able to get to it. So sometimes, sometimes the quality of the tool can't put you over the top. I mean, I think, that's important about impact sockets. You got to, yeah, you got to have, I think, a good, good set of impact sockets matters. Um, I'm not a tool yep. snob. Jeremy covered pretty much everything I would have said, too. I mean, I, I, some of the things I look at, I'm like, oh man, I got a pretty nice impact wrench and I, you know, a pretty nice impact driver, but I also use them all the GD time. So it's stuff you got, you got to have the, the stuff that's going to be reliable and it's okay to try to look for a good deal on it when, it, you know, if you're going to get the, the nice stuff. Like, uh, I, I, I don't think everybody's got to have, uh, you know, I mean, I'm talking about nice at Home Depot. I, you know, not, maybe maybe not nice off of the tool truck that shows up at my mechanics place. That stuff is great to have. Like, I got a couple of uh, snap-on uh, um, uh, screwdrivers. I got a couple of those like uh, that are really nice. I keep one in my house and I take one in the track, but they're they're perfect. They never let you down, and they're just exactly what you need all the time. So there's a couple of those I have that I'm like, oh, probably spend a little too much on this but i also use the crap out of it so i don't know it's yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a tough call to make sometimes because i also you know i'll i'll go crappy on some stuff like you know a pry bar or a heat gun or something if i need a heat gun just to get all the sound deadening out of the car i'm gonna get it from harbor freight and probably never worry about it again but if it's stuff you're gonna have on repeat and you need to save your bacon at the track it's probably worth getting a good version of it mm -hmm. yeah yeah totally agree there's a lot of i have a bunch of stuff that you know i, I was a tool guy I sold macro tools for a long time <laughs> That's why I, I, I said stop on so far. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I mean the, the quality tools, they make a big difference, but there's a lot of things that you can just go to Harbor Freight and you can grab because it's not something you need to use all the time. Um, right. you know, or what if I'm you saying don't care is, if it breaks. Right. Exactly. Or and you uh, get lost time. at the track. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, but the okay. tools that you use all the time, I think that, you know, those are the ones that, that it's worth spending a little extra on and getting a better quality tool. Yeah. And you don't have to buy them all at once either. You can, you know, Christmas, birthdays, anniversaries. As the need, as the need arises too, you know, as, as, as you get the need for it, is, is it often yep. a good time to purchase it? Yeah. Right. But She's I would gonna... say number one thing is a good quality torque wrench 
you really have to have, especially for the racetrack. I mean, think about you're putting your life and every one of your team members lives at, at hand when you're putting your wheels on your car. Right. So you've yeah. got a torque wrench that's 15 years old. It's never been calibrated. You know, it's something that you bought at Harbor Freight 15 years ago and you've used it a million times. Well, you don't know if that thing is accurate or not. Um, and you're putting these wheels on the car and you got people pulling, you know, multiple G's and corners. If one of those things is not on right. I mean, this some serious issues can happen in that situation. Well, also, the, the opposite side of that, just real quick, is I used to think I was a human torque wrench. So I would, you know, put wheels on my, on my Miata. Like, ah, that's got to be tight enough. You know, I'm just doing it with a, with a breaker bar. And uh, eventually, I sheared a couple studs off. And I'm like, ah, I guess I am not the human torque wrench. And also, I mean, if that, if that, could, if that could easily fail by hand in my garage, you know, I might be stretching studs that are going to break on track, too. So you could, you could under-tighten or you could be over-tightened. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Without, without a good torque wrench. 100%. Yep. All right, Vicky's going to explode if she didn't get this out because she has zero patience. So. <laughs> oh, no, wait, go, Vicky. Okay. go, Vicky, go, go. I have a question now. What is the inexpensive but most invaluable tool that we you... didn't finish with the one question? We're getting there. Hold on. Okay, I got all right. Okay. Okay. That's okay. I'm done. I, I'm you already piped up about that, too. Sorry. Do you have any more, Miss Vicky? Or are you? No, you're... I'm good. All right. So the correct answer. Okay. <laughs> Torque wrench. Oh, <laughs> I like torque wrench. Torque wrench is good. I love, just, I love, I love lamp. Just, just as, uh, just as important to me, I like a, a, a really good, trustworthy, stable tire pressure gauge. Not the little one you get for two dollars in your box of cereal. Good no, it's, it's worth it's worth getting a long acre tire gauge. You know what I mean? Exactly. There's, some, there's some stuff that's worth splurging from the instrument mm -hmm. place which is long acre racing l-o-n-g-a-c-r-e is a really great place for stuff that you need to be exactly right like you're you're going to be getting into a camber gaze yep. uh, yeah oh, so that's like, i don't know that you necessarily i don't know that you necessarily need to buy their specific branded drink bottle holder that bolts to the case there's some stuff you don't need to buy from long acre but there's mm -hmm. some stuff you do need to buy from them in my opinion so yeah i, I mm -hmm. agree with you okay something to do the alignment could be hub stands could be one of the string types could be whatever. I think he'd be good toe plates. Toe, some good plates. toe plates. Exactly. I think um, I like having scales. I don't know how to use them, but I like them and I want to use them for corner balancing and things like that. Yeah. And I think the thing that we spent the most money on that Vicky gets the most use out of, and I'm surprised she didn't even say it for her anniversary. She got, a car lift. If you can get one, I highly recommend A what? One. A lift? A lift. Nice. You know, that's a good thing. Those are, yeah. those are ones. I think you should, you should make sure you get a good one on those. So yep. what about, I know Vicky wants to do her question. I had this, I had this teed up. What about the stuff that it doesn't matter? Just, it doesn't matter. You're, you're going to spend all this extra money where the Harbor Freight one or the Home Depot one or whatever. It's just as good. It's fine. I I I want to add to mine too that what I find most handy and most useful is actually a I'm right here, Vicky. You, you, thanks. I, I appreciate it. I know. Is actually the entire like husky handled uh toolkit. Which oh, a is little just portable a, toolbox. A portable toolbox that has all your basics in it. You can put on a roller. I actually go to that more than I go to my cabinet because it just Don't rolls around Jeremy. with me. Don't say that to Jeremy. Um, I, th I think the portable with everything in it is extremely useful, extremely useful to have, um, especially if you're starting out. Um, very, very handy to have. She, when I was just like just doing track events with that Miata, I had like one small plastic craftsman toolbox that had every Miata specific thing and every basic hand tool I needed. And I almost never, ever needed anything that wasn't in that box. When I was in the truck, I had all the stuff I needed to change brake pads. You know, everything, everything was specific to working on that car and it all fit in a little craftsman toolbox. And so I don't know. I, I, as my routine's definitely expanded since then, but back in the day, I used to be a pretty simple operation that had all the shit I needed right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the one that I didn't talk about before was uh, anything car specific. Like there's certain car specific tools um, that you just, you know, just buy the good one, the one you need. 
so BMW's yeah. got a few, Miata's got a few. Um, you know, I'm sure every car does. I'm sure Jeremy's broken more Volkswagen specific tools than I, I even want to know about. So just happens. Okay. Okay. So what about the ones that you can you can afford to save a little money? Well, the, the ones where the the lower brands or the the less expensive brands, not that big a deal. You guys got any tools like that? Tools and supplies. I'm um, hint hint supplies. I kind of I kind of already I kind of already brushed my tip up against this, not knowing that this segment or part of the segment was coming. But I, you know, like, for me, like a, a pry bar is something that I don't really care too much about. There's some yep. stuff that I've used for you know interior prep and fab, like uh, the I Break. use the heat gun to strip out all the uh, the sound deadening in my race car. And, you know, figured I would not need it much more than that, so I got that at Harbor Freight where there were certainly more high end heat guns that you could get. You know, another one for me was there's this specific kind of saw that I needed to just like cut a few pieces of metal or brackets out of the car. It's this weird like reciprocating saw that kind of like nibbles at stuff. And mm-hmm. I was like, I'm not going to use this very much, but I bought that at Harbor Freight. I had to buy like a, a super nice one because I just bought it to do the few things that I needed done that very specific, but I don't expect to use it. I might use that saw maybe five, ten more times before I'm a dead guy. So I didn't need a really nice one, but. So for me, some of the some of the fab specific stuff that I don't expect to use a lot, I've, I've just gotten kind of a crappy version of. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sure I, I, I'm sure I'll think of some other stuff like other talking or somebody else will say some of my favorite cheapo stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I I definitely will always try to see if there's <laughs> see if I can get by with the lower lower cost option. Um, but like we said before, some of the stuff you use on repeat, you might as well get the good stuff. Yeah. So, so we're gonna we're gonna hurt Jeremy's heart because you know being a, a former tool guy, Jeremy. What stuff you could save a little money, you know, cuddle. No, I, I think there's a lot of stuff you can save a little money on. Um, anything really that you're not going to use a whole lot. Like Ben said, if you're not using it a, a ton, um, you know, it, it may not be worth it to to buy, you know, the, the product that's 10 times more money than than mm-hmm. it is somewhere else. You know, um, a lot of craftsman tools are great tools. Um, I, I, I have craftsman tools that come to the racetrack with me. Um, but I mean, anything that you're not really using a whole lot of and really anything that doesn't specifically pertain to safety. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like y- you don't cheap out on, you know, jacks, you don't cheap out no. on jack stands, no. um, you know, anything that pertains to safety related tools, um, you know, you, you can't cheap out on that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but regular hand tools that you're not going to use a lot of heat guns, um, you know, even you're not using a grinder a whole lot. Right. So, Go to Harbor Freight and pick up a cheap one of their cheap grinders that that are you know batter are um are plug in grinders you know and yeah. and just it's not you know you don't need it a whole lot so there's no no use in spending all the money on it um at that point you know it just becomes a oh well I bought the four hundred dollar one just to say you bought the four hundred dollar one you know what I mean Miss mm-hmm. Vicky you got any coming to mind I think. Um... I don't know. I'm just drawing a blank. I'm drawing okay. A blank. So the correct answer okay. is breaking, <laughs> bending. I know this is Jeremy's favorite part. Breaking, bending, and banging. Anything that you're using to break something else, like a breaker bar, it's, just, it's a piece of metal. You're, you're fine. Mm-hmm. Anything you're using to bend stuff, like a uh, pry bar, sometimes even, I'm going to offend a few people, sometimes your file doesn't need to be fancy. It's fine. It's a mm-hmm. piece of metal sandpaper. You're fine. And banging. I don't need a $300 hammer. I'm not that sensitive. My dead blow hammer can be a Harbor Freight hammer. I don't care. I'm hitting it. It's hitting something else. Um, you do need the, you do need the right type of hammer, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter where it comes from. I don't yeah, it doesn't have to be an right. S-wing, you know, leather right. with, with fossilized and engraved like a gun on the side. Home Depot hammers fine. Husky, oh, whatever. Yeah. And all of that goes to using the correct tool for the job. Right. right. If you've you ever that. had if you've ever had a hammer break on you when you hit something and it <laughs> shattered and blew all apart, I promise you you use the wrong hammer. Mm-hmm. And th- so I mean, I've I've had a lot of cheap hammers break and I've had a lot of good quality hammer break hammers break. So it's you know, you just use the right tool for the job and, yep. and you're right. okay. Yeah, also, when you need that screw, you, if, you hit it with a hammer. Oh, if you sorry. need it, 
if you needed a brass hammer and didn't use a brass hammer, you about to find out how bad you needed a brass hammer. Yeah. Just, right. Just, just, uh, yep. just a simple tip for everybody. <laughs> yep. 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 And speaking of brass, drift is not just a way of driving. <laughs> nah. That's right. When you need Lunch one. It's not just something you drink at a party. It is not. Nope. All right. I think I think we've done this one. Did we miss anything? Anything come to mind? No, but I will Vicky. say I did. I, I got I got I got something real quick that doesn't really have to do with anything about specific tools, which I'm holding a tool and I've been fidgeting with it this entire time. But no, but I think there's some validity to the people who are like, I just got the pimped out one because I wanted to have the nice one, even though I know I'm not going to use it. So don't shame yourself. If you go out no. and buy a tool, if you're a tool dork and you just want to have it. Don't feel bad about it after you listen to us kind of talk about when you can go to the cheaper option. If you just wanted that ball or one that you think looks cool and costs a little more, get that and don't beat yourself up. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just like other side of the coin. Yeah, Do what like you cars. love. Hey, yeah. Ben, when we ever get to a racetrack together, take a look at my toolbox. All right. I'm going to check it. You know, I'm going to check it out. <laughs> Got to. But, I, what, but the other thing too is I'm a, I'm a big guy that, that like, so it's got to feel good. Right. So if I pick that tool up and I'm going to use that ratchet, I need to handle that ratchet to feel good in my hand. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm that type of person as well, where if the cheap one feels like it doesn't feel good in my hand and I pick up one that's, you know, a little bit more money, I'm going to buy the one that feels good in my hand. Right. Sure. So it, it you get, there's a whole bunch of variables that go that's into a tool into man talking tools. right there. Right. Mm -hmm. But I've always uh, yeah. been that way. Even before I was a tool man, I've always been that way. That's why the screwdrivers, right? That, that is like, there is not another screwdriver that compares to a Matco screwdriver. Um, Vicky has some, when I started turning wrenches, you know, 25 years ago, I bought tools from the tool trucks and those were the screwdrivers that I bought because they were the most comfortable screwdrivers that you could pick up. And, and they, they just, they were, and that's what it was. So it, it does make a big difference when you're buying a tool, if it feels good in your hand or not. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, ergonomics matter a lot. I mean, some of the best insights I've gotten on tools were talking to some people who do it for a living. Like, uh, like uh, when I used to work for a uniform company, I got to go through a lot of auto shops. We would go talk to customers and stuff like that. And, and just hear what the guys who actually have to do it for a living use, because they're yep. like, oh, this beats my hands to death. So, you know, you'll find the most comfortable options talking to people who need to interface with these tools all the time to bring food home. You know what I mean? Those are the people who complain and really tell you like this is messing me up but this this fits my hand good so if there's any professional mechanics who are willing to talk to your dumbass i would say listen to them i only say that from my own personal dumbass experience but nah. that's where i look but that's it's where true I some of the best stuff is yeah I'm talk to people who actually have to deal with this stuff all the time you know, i've gotten some pretty good insights about what they prefer and why yeah mm -hmm. yeah and it's true and and the other part of this too is if you're just getting into it and you don't know if you're going to be you know, working on the car, right? You, you're, you're learning and you don't know if you're going to want to work on it. If you just want to have different team members work on the car, right? Don't buy the expensive stuff because you have no idea. Right. You know, plus, it, it's plus it's, you've got so much to buy in the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. If, yeah. if you're doing it over and over and you find that things are breaking, then, then it's time to buy the more expensive tool that may not break as, as much. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure you're using the tool the right way too. Like your screwdriver yeah, is, is not it, your pry bar. Is, uh -huh. Yeah, is this the right tool for the job? Is also an important question that I am always asking myself. You know? mm -hmm. Right, right, exactly. All right, I think we've beaten that uh, hammer into the ground. Yes. How'd I do there? Huh? Huh? Mm. Not good. <laughs> Pair to Midland. C plus C yeah. C minus. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Right in that C area. Yeah, yeah, just well, sort of in that midland zone. I yeah, guess. I need I need to be graded on a curve on that one. That was that was cool. <laughs> All right, very well. Thank you guys. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you.